Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about the different red flags and bad signs that you should be looking out for in your relationship. But before we get into that, remember to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so that you get notified every time I post a video and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy and if you want to see more advice type videos like this one. And with that, let's jump into it. Okay, so first off, I just want to clarify a couple things. One is that if you see me kind of looking down away from the camera, I have my notes with me um, just because I have a lot of important things I don't want to leave out. So I wrote them down and I might be looking down from time to time. Yeah, and then the other thing is I just want to clarify that this could be, in my case, I was obviously dating a guy. Also, most of these points I'm taking from my previous relationship and obviously i was dating a guy but this could be true of a girl doing this to a guy the, the inverse could be true as well this isn't necessarily guys you know there, there isn't necessarily it's not limited to a girl seeing all these red flags with her boyfriend it could be a guy seeing all these red flags with his girlfriend too but most of these points I'm just saying in general I'm not getting into specifics because I don't want to throw my ex under the bus or anything but yeah okay so let's jump into it now these aren't really specifically in any certain type of order however the first one I am saying first because this is one of the first things I noticed with my relationship, and it is something that you could easily notice early on before it's really bad enough for you to notice it's a red flag. And that is if they want you to change for them. Now, this could start out with just like little things of like, hey, you should eat less junk food and you should try to eat healthier. And then that could spiral into them trying to control what you eat or control how much you eat or tell you, don't eat that, it's bad. You need to eat this version instead. So that's why I'm bringing this one up first because it's very easy to see little ways that they want you to change. And maybe it's a way that you're like, you know what? Yeah, you're right. I've been needing to change that anyway, or I think I need to change that. Or maybe you realize, yeah, you're right. That's not really a good idea but it can spiral out of control even if there are little things that maybe you do actually need to change and they were right to say so you giving them that validation of yes i'll change that it could turn into other things that you don't need to change and they're just controlling you for example this could also manifest itself in terms of you're out shopping together, or you're going thrifting, and he's like, oh, we should try this. And maybe it is totally not your style at all, but he's like, or she, is pushing you into, no, you need to buy this, I really want you to try this, and it's not your style at all. Or maybe, maybe you're like, well, I'll give it a try, and we'll see, and it's on a trial basis, but then, they continue to push you to wear it or try it with other stuff to make it work or maybe sure but maybe we can oh you don't like it well maybe if we maybe if you wear it with like if it's a if it's a jacket well maybe if you wear it with a skirt instead of pants you'll like it better or if you wear it with this hat or maybe wear it with boots and a belt they might keep trying other things to get you to like it so that they can feel satisfied stuff like that. Um, another thing, back to food, like what you should eat or what you shouldn't eat, they might try to tell you, oh, well, that's not healthy, try to get this brand, you know? And it can just go out of control to them practically taking over your grocery experience and telling you what you should and shouldn't eat. And let me let me rephrase, if they're genuinely being helpful and you're and saying like bro this is like really unhealthy you should eat this instead and it's something that you didn't realize and you're like oh my gosh you know 
like zero sugar Gatorade, for example, it still has fructose corn syrup in it. Some people don't realize the zero sugar stuff still has something else in it to make it sweet that's bad for you. If they're kindly pointing out like, hey, this is really bad because it still has sugar, you should try this electrolyte drink and it really is zero sugar and it doesn't have the bad stuff in it and it still tastes like Gatorade, it still tastes good. You know, that's one thing if they're genuinely trying to help, but you've got to watch for that because I was, I mean, I don't want to say victim, but I was the person who genuinely thought they were trying to help, and it's not always one big thing right away. Sometimes it's a lot of little things, and it spirals out of control like a snowball, and when you get to the end of it, you realize, wow, I'm a completely different person than I was. They just add up. So that is definitely a big one to look out for that could rear its ugly head early on in the relationship. And my next point, kind of going along with that, is doesn't think you should ever stop trying to impress. I feel like that kind of goes along with them wanting you to be a certain way for them. So if you're like making sure you, you know, maybe it's that first date, or if you're long distance, that first FaceTime call, and you want to make sure you're dressed all nice and you got your makeup on or your hair combed or or whatever you got your hat you know got your beard all trimmed whatever it is and you're doing that to look good to impress and then they tell you you shouldn't ever stop like if you slack because you're like oh i won him or her over i don't need to be dressed to the teeth every time we see each other anymore and then they up and tell you like, why did you ever stop? You shouldn't have ever stopped trying to win me over. That is a big red flag because have you ever really won them over if you don't ever have to stop trying? So yeah, they shouldn't be expecting you to keep trying. Like you should be able to FaceTime in your pajamas at midnight and they should love you and like you for that. They should be able to you know, FaceTime you first thing in the morning when you just woke up and you don't look so good because you just woke up and they still think you're beautiful. You know, you shouldn't have to worry constantly about looking good for them. And thankfully, I don't have to worry about that anymore. But yeah, that's just, that's just something you definitely need to look out for is if you're constantly worrying about your appearance or feeling like, oh, I'm gonna see him again, I gotta look good. Now, the first few dates, you know, there's a fine line between wanting to look good because you like the person and you enjoy dressing up for them. So please don't misunderstand me. That's totally fine. But if something they're doing is pressuring you to make you feel like you have to do that or make you feel like you have to dress a certain way, that is not a good sign. All right, so my next point, and this could also surface early on, is if they are pressuring you to do things you don't wanna do, whether that's go somewhere, or they wanna come back to your apartment or your house, and you're like, what the heck, I barely know you, or they're, you know, other other stuff that they just wanna pressure you to do, or they wanna want you to get intimate before you feel comfortable with that that is obviously a red flag you have control over the situation remember that if they're trying to pressure you to do something that you don't want to do and they're not respectful that you don't want to do it or they're like we'll wait as long as it takes for you to get comfortable and then we'll do it like like Sure, I'll wait for you to get comfortable with me first, but, but it's happening tonight. That's not a good sign. If you're not comfortable, just run, run. And if they aren't respecting you and they're not leaving, or they're, they're not going home, or they're not leaving you alone, or they won't take you home, get help. Seriously, get help. Yeah, so that is definitely, 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 a red flag is if they don't respect what you are and are not comfortable with. So definitely be watching out for that. 
because you could end up in a really bad situation if you give in to them. Okay, and going along with that is guilt tripping into doing whatever they want you to do. So if they try to make you feel bad that you won't do it, that is a red flag. They need to accept that if you don't want to do something, you don't want to do it and they need to stop pressuring. So nobody should ever make you feel bad if they're like, oh, I really want to do this and you don't feel well or you're not comfortable. They need to just say, oh, okay, I understand. That makes sense. You know, well, hopefully I can see you again sometime or hopefully you feel better or whatever. They should not be making you feel bad. If they're trying to say like, oh, all right, fine, but I'm gonna be lonely and miserable if you don't come with me right now or whatever. Like if they're trying to turn this around so that you feel sorry for them and pressured to say, all right, fine, I'll do it. Like that's not okay. Even if, cause some people will act like, oh, that's totally fine. Like they're giving you the choice and then they make you feel bad if you don't pick like they'll give you the choice, but then they'll make you feel guilty if you don't pick the option that they wanted you to pick. And that is not okay. You should have the freedom in any relationship to be like, I'm really sorry, I just don't feel well, I need to go home. Or no, I'm sorry, I'm really not comfortable with that. But if that's not the case, don't fall for it. Don't give in to anybody who's making you feel bad for not doing what they want. That is not okay and you should never give in to it. Whether it's, hey, I want you to sleep over and you're not comfortable with that because that's compromising your beliefs that say not to sleep together until you're married. Or if they wanna come over late at night and you're ready for bed or whatever it may be. Or they wanna, you know, come over to your apartment and you just met them and they're trying to make you feel bad, just be like, sorry, I'm just not ready for that. I don't want to do that. And just be bold, stick up for yourself and don't let them talk you into anything. All right, going along with that, we have the next point, which is if you love me, you would do fill in the blank. So this is a big one and I've never really personally experienced this, but it's definitely a bad sign if somebody is like, oh, but if you loved me, you would do this, whether it's be intimate with them or have them over before you feel comfortable or whatever it is. No one should make you feel like you have to do it or they'll feel like you don't love them anymore. That is not okay. Do not give into that. Do not let that talk you into anything. Now, let me rephrase. Sometimes I think I've I've joked with people. I'm like, oh, but I thought you loved me. Like, if you loved me, you would do this. And it's, and it's like clearly a joke. Like, if you love me, you would try this, you know, nasty food I'm trying to talk you into or something like that. I'm like, oh, but if you love me, you'd do it. You know, when it's like clearly a joke. That's one thing. And that's not necessarily bad. Now you don't want your whole relationship to revolve around jokes like that to the point where it makes other people question that he's guilt tripping you into stuff or she's guilt tripping you into stuff. But like once in a while, a little joke is fine. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this serious, like, no, if you love me, you'll do this. And if you don't, then like, you must not love me because you wouldn't do this. And like, they're dead serious. That's what I'm talking about here. So I just don't want you to misunderstand. There's a difference between joking and being serious. Although you should definitely refrain from too much joking. Okay, so my next point is nothing you do ever being good enough. So this is a big one. If you can never do enough to please him or her, that's a problem because if they really love you for who you are, you shouldn't have to work your butt off trying to please them. That is never a good sign. I will just say for my ex, I moved out of state for him to be with him. And 
that was never good enough. He never fully appreciated that I left everything behind and moved to another state for him. He never really fully appreciated that. And I often brought it up. I'd say, I moved here for you. And he'd say something, I don't remember exactly, but something to indicate like, well, yeah, but that's still not good enough because you're not doing this or whatever it was. I can't even remember exactly. But in general, that big thing I did, which was moving out of state, was never good enough. So if you're constantly worrying about being good enough or constantly being told you're not good enough or you don't do anything good enough, nothing you do is good enough, you can't do enough to please him or her, that is not a good sign because if they genuinely love you for who you are, there should be no question of whether or not you're good enough. Okay, so this, my next point is another big one. And that is blaming you for stuff that's not only not your fault, but it's their fault. That is a big one. I cannot impress this enough. Huge red flag, huge, huge, huge. If they blame you for something that is their problem, get out, get out. That was the last straw for me with my relationship is basically he hurt my feelings. And when I confronted him, he told me that it was my fault. Basically, I wasn't doing what he wanted and he was accusing me that I never do anything nice for anybody. And when I confronted him and said that I was upset that he, that, well, I didn't just say I'm upset. I said, you're upsetting me. He told me that it was my fault and I was feeling the burn of when I won't do nice things for people. And that was the last straw and I ended it the next day or either the next day or the day after. But basically, if anyone ever tells you that something is your fault, I mean, even if it's not their fault, but they're blaming you for it and they know it's not your fault, that, that's bad enough. But if they're blaming you for something that's their fault, that is a huge problem. Nobody should ever do that to you because it can have a way of flipping the situation around and they're now mad and it, it can end up making you feel bad and wanting to apologize to them for something that they did. So please don't fall into that trap. Please don't turn around and apologize to them. Please don't, don't fall into that trap. This is a huge problem that a lot of toxic relationships have is they blame you and make you feel bad for something that they did and that is just not okay. Okay, and then another point that I think is important that you might not ever expect would be a problem, but it definitely can be, and that is making you pay for dates because they ran out of money. And this is specifically like the guy making the girl pay for dates because I think it's stereotypical for guys to pay for most of the dates. Now, let me clarify something. I think it is perfectly fine to alternate who pays for the date. Me and my husband took turns paying for the date. He'd pay and then I'd pay and then he'd pay. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with it as long as the motive is, hey, I want to do something nice for you and I'm gonna use my money to pay for our meal. There is nothing wrong with that. But when the motive behind it is the other person ran out of money, don't do it. Just say, oh, you're out of, you're out of money? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, that's way, that's really too bad. I guess, I guess we can't eat here then because I'm not paying because you said you'd pay. Like, don't, I mean, you don't have to say that word for word, but don't let them talk you into paying because they run out of money. That is on them. And if you give in and you pay for it, 
you've let them win and they're gonna think that they can talk you into it every time. So do not fall for that. Definitely look at the reasoning behind why, why are you paying for the date? Is it because you want to or because the other person made you pay for certain reasons? Now, again, there's a difference. If the other person who normally pays lets you know ahead of time, like, hey, something happened, I just got out of a job, so I can't pay. So if you wanna still go, you'd have to pay today. I am so sorry, you know? And then they give you the option and at least you know ahead of time. It's just a matter of if you're expecting one thing because that's how it's supposed to be and then that is not what happens, that's when it gets bad. So if they clarify ahead of time, hey, I can't pay today, so if you still wanna go out, you will have to pay, that's fine. But still look at the motive of, you know, did they blow all their money foolishly and that's why they can't pay today? Or have they just still been unable to get a job? You know, because there's a difference. Even if they let you know ahead of time, like, hey, I can't pay today, but you know it's because they blew all their money, you still need to hardcore think about whether or not you wanna give into that or not. So, there you go. And my last point, this is one that I actually thought of while I was talking to you guys about all this and I realized I didn't have it written down on here and I think it's important. And that is if you have issues with the other person that you clearly communicate and they do nothing to change, that's a problem. Whether it's them having poor financial habits and you want them to save more or whether they are late to everything or they tend to just argue with you a lot instead of letting you speak or you think they're too controlling over what outfit you wear to church whatever it is if it's a problem and they know it's a problem because you've repeatedly brought it up and they don't change, that is on them, not you. So if they try to come at you and say, well, you didn't make a big enough deal, you should have told me, I didn't know this was a problem enough that I needed to change, I thought it was just a pet peeve. Okay, for one thing, generally a pet peeve is something that is annoying, but it's not a really serious problem that needs to be fixed. And as someone pointed out to me once, even if it does get to that point, that's no, it's no longer a pet peeve. Even, even if it was still a pet peeve, it's still becoming a problem that needs to be fixed. Now, it would be on you if you haven't really mentioned like, oh, hey, this is a problem. Like if you're just silently being annoyed and then they're not doing anything to fix it because you're not really being clear or you only made it a point like one time, then you need to like reevaluate whether or not you were actually clear that this was a problem that needed to be addressed. But if it's something you say every time it comes up, that's on them. And you shouldn't have to say like, hey, it's a real problem when you do this and I need you to stop. For example, if someone's always late, if you're saying, like for example, if it's church and you go to church together and they're picking you up for church every week and they're always late, if you ask them repeatedly every Saturday night to make sure, sure, sure what time they're gonna be there on Sunday morning, like, if you say you're gonna be here as close till whatever time you need to leave as possible, right? If you're saying stuff like that every week, they should be getting the message that you're annoyed as heck that they're late every week. And if they're not, if they're like, well, I didn't know that was a problem, then that's their fault, not yours, because you were reiterating it every Saturday night by saying you'll be here as close till 9.30 as or close till 10 as possible or wh whatever time you need to leave, say it's say it's 9.30. 
You'll be here as close to 9.30 as possible, right? If you're saying that every week before the night before church, that's on them to not get it that, wow, she's annoyed I'm late every week or he's annoyed I'm late every week. That's on them. So if you, point being, if you are being pretty explicitly clear, even if you're not saying, dude, this really bothers me when you do this. If you're at the very least getting annoyed enough about it every time it happens, they should be getting the message that you don't like that and they need to fix it. So if they're not doing anything, that is their problem, not yours. And one other point I do wanna make that I'm realizing I should probably say that I also did not write down. And that is right at the point of the breakup, if you've had it, and they suddenly try to ask you, well, what's wrong? Well, why didn't this work? And they're coming up and trying to do all these things to fix it. Well, what was it you needed me to change? Well, I didn't like it that you did this. Okay. Well, I, well, I also didn't like this. Okay. And, and they're acting like they're gonna fix it. Don't fall for that. You gave them plenty of chances and they're not gonna change. They're not gonna change. Or even if they do, they're like, oh, I changed, I'm on time for church or whatever the thing, hypothetically, if they were late for something every week and you didn't like that. And now they're like, oh, we're, well, I'm on time every week now. Just be like, oh, well, good for you. You know, cause they shouldn't be doing that just to win you back. Because being on time for stuff or whatever the problem is, it's still good for them to fix themselves and become a better person for anyone else in life that they may encounter. So don't let any of this talk you into coming back because people are gonna fall into old habits and you know, history repeats itself and they shouldn't be changing just for you. And you might even find it important to tell them that and that's fine to just be like, you know what, that's really great. But you shouldn't just be changing to win me back. You know, it's still really important for you to, you know, be on time for things or learn to not be too controlling or have better financial habits or whatever it was that was a problem that they're now claiming they're gonna fix and you suspect they're doing it to try to win you back just feel free to reiterate and be like, well, this isn't gonna win me back, but it's also, it's still very important for you to develop better habits in this area, just so that you'll succeed in life. All right, I think that is about it for this video. Sorry, this was kind of a long one. Um, comment down below if you think my videos need to be shorter because I just feel like I have a lot to say about the topics that I discuss here, but if you guys are like getting bored and clicking out and you know, I would love feedback if I need to try to shorten it. In this case, I just felt like I had a lot of important things to say, speaking from my experience and I just don't want anyone else to fall into the same trap. Which brings me one other thing, just to reiterate. If you are in a relationship like this, or all these red flags I just described, if you've got all of that going on, you are not trapped. Please know that you are not trapped. You can still get out, whether you're married, whether you're dating, whether you're engaged, you're never too tied to get the heck out. If you're being abused, I don't care if you're like, oh, well, they never hit me. Great, but abuse is abuse, whether it's verbal or physical. So you can still get out if you're in a relationship like this. And it might take a couple of people telling you you can still get out. Or it might take one person telling you more than once. That's how it was for me. I had to be told a few times before I realized, you know what, you're right, and I got out. So please don't ever feel like you are trapped. You can still 
get out. If you're being treated like this, don't settle for less than you deserve. Never feel like there is any way you have to stay with them. Never feel like you are their punching bag for them to take out any of their problems on. That is not okay either. Please, please just understand no matter how tied down you feel, how much you're connected to their family or their circle of friends, if you're being mistreated, get out. It doesn't matter, oh, I have this whole connection with their family or, you know, maybe we work the same job and it'd be awkward or, you know, or we're engaged or, or we've been married, like everyone expects us to get married. So whatever, if they're mistreating you, get out. Just get out. All right, sorry guys. <laughs> Again, I know this was a long one. I just keep thinking of like really important things and I just don't want anybody to be stuck in not only an unhappy, but you know, a toxic, emotionally exhausting relationship. I just don't want anybody to have that. So yeah, hopefully this helps somebody. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Ring the bell so you get notified anytime I post a video and give us a thumbs up if you enjoy this kind of thing. Comment down below what other types of videos you would love to see me do. And please share this if there's someone else that you think could benefit from listening to me talk about this. And yeah, um, that is it for this video. Thanks for watching if you watched all of this, however long it ends up being. Thank you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys. <laughs>